for your listening enjoyment, John Lund as... <sighs> Johnny Dollar. Did I wake you up, Dollar? Oh, how could you? It's only four in the morning. Sorry, this is Ted Albright. I'm Eastern Indemnity's new branch manager in Chicago. Congratulations and good night. Oh, wait a minute, Dollar. I need you out here right away. It's about Frank Harvey. One of your claim adjusters? Then you do know him. I worked on a lot of cases with him, yeah. Well, you won't work on any more. He's been murdered. I'll take the first plane out. Mind if I cut in to say something, fellas? It won't take too long, since a word to the wise is sufficient. And in the English language, there is one word which is important to just about everyone in the world. That word is security. Security has several different meanings, however. Usually, we think of it in connection with the protecting of our military installations and defense industries. But it means more than that. There is a security which applies to every man, woman, and child in America. The security which comes from being in good health, having a good education, and being well taken care of in case things get a little too tough to handle by oneself. This kind of security is the problem of the president's newest cabinet member, the Secretary of Health, Education, and Welfare. This department ties together the work of several governmental agencies. First, there is the United States Public Health Service, which strives to make certain that the general health of the people in our country is in the best of conditions. Then, there is the Food and Drug Administration, which guarantees that the food we eat is pure and safe to eat. The Social Security Board, which takes care of old people, children, and the blind who need assistance, also comes under the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare, as does the United States Office of Education. This office does research on the educational possibilities, changes, and opportunities, and passes on its information to the various state boards of education. As you can see, the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare is one of the most important agencies in our government, assuring us, as it does, of a normal and healthy way of life. Expense accounts submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office, Eastern Indemnity and Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the classified killer matter. Expense account item one, $71.30. Airfare and incidentals between Hartford and Chicago. I was greeted at the airport by Ted Albright and one of Chicago's winter blizzards. Sorry about this lousy weather, Dollar. It'll slow us up plenty. Oh, no hurry. It'll give you time to fill me in on Frank Harvey. Well, I can tell you everything I know in about a half a minute. It wasn't even a child when it happened. The wife and I were visiting her folks in Milwaukee. The police traced me there at 2 this morning. What did they tell you? Oh, lousy drivers think they own the whole road. Yeah, what did the police tell you? Well, Frank was apparently at the office until a quarter of 7 last night. That's when the night elevator man signed him out in his book. He left the office alone. But now, later, a truck driver found his body half buried in a snowdrift out on Mannheim Road near the northwest city limits. He'd been shot three times at close range. And that's all I know. Oh, well, not very much, is it? Watch what you're doing. You... All the stupid morons. Everybody thinks he can drive a car. You're kind of on edge, aren't you? Well, who wouldn't be? This thing happening to Harvey, driving back to Chicago in the middle of the night, no sleep. Oh, I'm sorry, Dollar. I guess it all piled up on me. I suppose you want to go right to our offices here. No, I'll check with the police first. You want to drop me off? Sure. By the time we got down to 11th and State, the snow plows were out in full force. I went up to Homicide, where I met Lieutenant Franchetti. A blizzard like this always cuts down the crime incidents rate, Colin. Homicide, particularly. There'll be a rise in deaths from natural causes and yakky dack, but not much for our department. Yakky dack? Yeah. And I freeze. Favorite cold weather drink of the bums on West Madison. They drain it from the radiators of parked cars. It's pretty lethal. Yeah, I'm here. Oh, thanks. You want to know what we got on Frank Harvey, do you? That's the general idea. Well, we've picked up a little more dope since we talked to Albright. 
Looks like Harvey was murdered while trying to sell his car. How do you figure that? Well, he'd been running a classified ad in one of the evening papers for the last couple of nights. Uh, here's a copy of it. Thanks. For sale, 53 Cadillac convertible, perfect condition, all accessories reasonable. How does this tie in? Well, according to one of the mechanics in the garage where Harvey kept his car, he met a prospective buyer there last night. He heard him discussing the car, and then Harvey and the man got in and drove off. That was about five to seven. The mechanic give you a description? Yeah, pretty detailed one. Didn't catch his name, though. Ziegler's checking over the mug books right now. That's the mechanic's name? Yeah, Will Ziegler. So far, he's drawn a blank. Anyway, at 8.37 last night, we clocked in a call from a truck driver phoning from a pay station out on Mannheim Road. He found Harvey in a snowbank. He was shot to death, huh? Yeah, three bullet wounds, two slugs still in him, third one's missing, 38 caliber. The land and groove marks are clean enough to identify the gun if we ever find it. What about the car? It's missing. Put out an APB with a description of the man and the general pickup on the car. No luck so far. Well, how do you see it, Lieutenant? Well, my guess is somebody figured out a cheap way to get himself a good automobile. Well, that's it, Dollar. Looks pretty routine from here on in. Nothing much you can do to help. No, maybe not, Lieutenant, but I'd like to stick around. Well, sure. Nothing else you can cover. No, excuse me. Lieutenant Franchetti. Ah, uh, yes, Sergeant. Oh, good. Uh, the address again? Uh, yeah, I got it. Thanks. Oh, would you like to take a ride, Dollar? Where to? Mannheim Road. I just found Harvey's car. It took us some 45 skidding minutes to make our way through the storm out to a beer and hamburger joint on Mannheim Road. A precinct car and a handful of reporters were already there when we arrived. A detective sergeant filled us in on the background. The owner of this place came out about an hour ago to open up, Lieutenant. He saw the car parked out there in the parking lot and phoned in. Uh-huh. It's Frank Harvey's car, all right. Been out here a long time, all that snow piled on it. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt about where Harvey got shot. Not with all those blood stains on the seat. Uh-huh. You sure that mechanic said it was a man Harvey drove off with last night? Does something give you a different idea? There's a woman's compact back here on the floor. Expense account item two, $3.80. Cab fare back to your offices in downtown Chicago. We got nowhere talking to the beer joint owner, and there weren't any more physical clues in the car to tell us anything. But I figured maybe Ted Albright could. That doesn't make sense, Dollar. Why not? Well, you said the garage mechanic saw Frank drive away with a man. How'd a woman get into the picture? Well, I thought maybe you could help us with that. Me? How? Well, you were Frank's boss. You must have got to know him pretty well. Well, sure, sure. But what's that got to do with this woman? Well, did he have any girlfriends? Anybody in particular that he went around with? Oh, no, not that I know of. I'm sure he didn't. A young, single guy making a good salary, driving a 53 Cadillac convertible? And he didn't have any girlfriend? Well, I didn't mean it that way. Sure he did. But there wasn't anybody in particular I knew of. No women involved in any recent adjustments, either. Oh, you've been going through Harvey's claim files, huh? Yeah, I thought it might be a good idea. Didn't come up with anything, though. What about life insurance? Yeah, I talked to him about that. All he was carrying was 10,000 GI. My mother was the beneficiary. No motive there. Yeah, it looks like the police were right. and Somebody was just trying to get himself a car, Chief. Would you get it, darling? Yeah, sure. Hello. Hey, uh, say, uh, is this the uh, insurance company where that uh, fellow worked who was killed? That's right. Who's this? Well, what I want to know is, uh, you guys willing to pay something for uh, finding the guy who done it? Do you know something about it? I know plenty, mister. Yeah, plenty. But I ain't telling nothing without getting paid for it. Uh, not that I don't believe every patriotic citizen should ought to do his duty. But if there's a few bucks lying around, well, fellas got to make a living these days, you know. Yeah, sure. Suppose we get together and talk it over. Well, no, I wouldn't want to do that, mister, unless I was pretty sure of making a deal. Oh, not that I ain't on the side of law and order, you understand. But it ain't too easy for a guy to get along these days. What with the high cost of living and all. If you have information, you've got a deal. Now, where do we get together? Well, it ain't that I want to chill you for anything, mister. Always willing to do my duty as a honest citizen. Yeah, yeah. Where do we get together? Well, now, uh, my name's Taggart. Spell it with two G's. I'm the room clerk at the 
Roxy Hotel. Where's that? Well, it's at uh, Wells and Grand. No, I ain't trying to chisel or anything, mister. It's just that I... Be right there. Expense account item three. A dollar and 25 cents. Cab fare to the Biloxi Hotel. Expense account item four, twenty dollars. To help the room clerk, Martin Taggart, combat the high cost of living. Two principal items of which were obviously garlic and bourbon. Uh, that's her name right there. Wrote on the register. Miss Alma Carter, she calls herself. She checked in here around 9.30 last night. That's right. All kind of scared and frightened looking. Noticed some stains on her coat, too. Looked like blood to me. Oh, and not that it's any of my business. I just give them their rooms and collect their money. That's all I'm paid for. All right, let's have the rest of the tickets. Well, uh, when she come out here in the lobby every couple of hours or so to listen to the news broadcast on the radio there, and uh, and uh, when she wanted me to go out and buy the papers for her three or four times, well, I started wondering about things. Very shrewd. Yeah. Well, when I heard the news about that woman's compact being found in the car, that kind of clinched things. I figured that I'd better put through a call to you. She's in room 14? That's right. Room 14. Uh, you'll find it right straight down there. Thanks. Uh... Yes, who's there? Miss Carter, I'd like to talk to you. Who are you? My name is Dollar, insurance investigator. Insurance investigator? All right, come on. Thanks. Now, what's this all about, Mr. Dollar? Nothing on a perfect stranger's room saying you have to talk with me. Let's get one thing straight first. You're wrong about our being strangers. Wrong? I've never seen you before. No, but I've seen you. Or at least your picture. My picture? Yeah. On the desk of the Chicago manager for Eastern Indemnity. On... On the desk of... That's right, Mrs. Albright. You know, many great men have attained the highest office in our land, the presidency of the United States. Can you guess the name of this man? He was president longer than anyone else. Probably no other president since Lincoln had as many friends and enemies. During his administration, many beneficial measures became law, such as unemployment compensation and Social Security. During a serious banking crisis, he reassured the people by declaring, all we have to fear is fear itself. When he was 63, a brain hemorrhage put an end to one of the most controversial administrations in our history. If you don't have his name by now, here's one more clue. He was the first to broadcast the so-called fireside chat. Who was he? Franklin Delano Roosevelt, 32nd President of the United States. His life is part of your American heritage. <laughs> And now, with our star, John Lund, we bring you the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Under the proper circumstances, Mrs. Ted Albright could have been a very attractive woman. Under the circumstances in which I met her, she didn't come even close to making the grade. You know who I am. You know I'm Ted's wife. You were with Frank Harvey last night? Yes. When he was killed? Yes. What happened, Mrs. Albright? Can I have a cigarette, please? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Thanks. I ran out a couple of hours ago. Didn't help my nerves any. Yeah. Thank you. That helps. All right. What happened, Mrs. Albright? Well... Frank was going to give a prospect a ride in the car last night. He asked me if I'd mind going along. Pretty friendly with Frank, were you? He was a good friend. Did your husband know that you had this date with him? No, Ted thought I was visiting my folks in Milwaukee. Mm-hmm. Go on. 
Frank picked me up the main entrance of the insurance building about seven. This other man was in the car? Yes, the front seat next to Frank. I got in and sat between him and the door. Did Frank introduce you? He mentioned the man's name, yes, but it was in kind of a mumble. I didn't get it. Okay. What happened then? Well, the man asked Frank if he'd mind driving out to his house so he could have his wife look at the car. He didn't give the exact address, just told Frank to drive up Mannheim Road. Mm -hmm. Go on. We were driving along a lonely stretch of road when the man told Frank to pull over to the side and stop. He had a gun in his hand. Frank asked him what the big idea was. And the man laughed in a kind of crazy way. Pulled the trigger. What happened then? Everything's kind of a blur after that. I think I screamed. Tried to get out of the car. I know I fell to the ground. And I got to my feet and started running. Did the man chase you? I don't know. I just kept on running, and when I saw that old shack down the road, I ran behind it and hid. I think I fainted then. Some time later, I got a lift from a passing motorist. He took me into town, and I... And I came here. You've been here ever since? Yes. Why didn't you call the police when you got into town? Don't you realize what happened? I was out with a man who wasn't my husband. Involved in a murder I couldn't tell anyone. My only chance to avoid being involved in a scandal. Can't you understand that? No, I can't. And I don't think Frank Harvey could either. After Mrs. Albright told her story to Lieutenant Franchetti and a police stenographer, she was booked and held as a material witness. Then Franchetti sent out a pickup for Ted Albright. Now, looks like it's boiling down, Dollar. Jealous husband hires a gun to knock off his wife's boyfriend. It's a classic pattern. Yeah, maybe. Uh, what about that garage mechanic? Uh, Ziegler? Yeah. He have any luck with the mug books? Yeah. Came up with three that he said looked pretty close. All ex-cons, long records. We're running them down now. How does Mrs. Albright's description of the killer fit? Uh, not too close. I showed her the mugs and she said no. But then she would. Why? Well, once we get the guy, he'll put the finger on her husband. That'll be a stinking mess. Well, it's not exactly reminiscent of a rose right now. It looked like routine police procedure from then on in, so one of Franchetti's men drove me to the Palmer house, and I checked into my room. I was looking forward to a hot shower, but I didn't quite make it. Johnny Dollar. This is Albright, Dollar. I've got to talk to you. Where are you? Down in the lobby. Come on up. Come in. Where's Alma, Dollar? Have the police got her? Yeah. Material witness. Dear God in heaven. They've got a pickup out for you, too. For me? Well, why should... Hey, wait a minute. Did the police think that I killed Frank Harvey? Or hired someone to do it. But that's incredible. It's insane. It's you not... knew Alma was seeing Frank, didn't you? I... Well, I suspected it, yes. I wasn't sure, You were but... pretty sure she was out with Frank last night. That's why you went up to Milwaukee, to check on her story about going to visit her parents there. Yes, I did. But I didn't get there until almost 10 o'clock, and that's the first I really knew she wasn't there. Don't you see, Dollar? That's my alibi. The police won't think so. I don't care what the police think. It's Alma I'm worried about down there in some stinking rotten cell. There's got to be some way of getting this mess straightened out. I know what the first step is. What's that? You're going to turn yourself in. Expense account, I have five. Two dollars and twenty-five cents. Cab fare from the Palmer House to police headquarters at 11th and State, where I dropped off Albright in care of Lieutenant Franchetti and then went out to the garage where Frank Harvey had kept his car. I found the man I wanted in a paint booth at the rear of the second floor. Ziegler? Your name's Ziegler? I'm looking for Will Ziegler. Is that you? Yeah, that's right, Mac. What can I do for you? My name is Dollar. Huh? I'm an insurance investigator. Yeah, that's so. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Oh, hey, I get it, Mac. Insurance investigator. Yeah, that guy Harvey, he was in the same racket, wasn't he? You know, the guy who got killed. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it was rough. Guy getting himself bumped off that way, real rough. I was standing right there when he and the Joker who done it drove off, you know. Yeah, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Yeah, sure, Mac. 
be glad to tell you what I can, but uh, I already gave that lieutenant, uh, what's his name, Franchetti? Yeah. Yeah, I already gave him all the dope. I picked out two or three guys from that rogues gallery book that looked like the Joker I'd seen. Had you ever seen that man down here before? Mm, well, I couldn't swear it, Mac. I don't think I ever seen a guy before, no. What about Ted Albright? Who? Ted Albright. He was Harvey's boss. Ever see him down here? Albright. Albright, ah. Uh... Well, the name don't mean anything, Mac. Could be he's a customer here, but I never run across him. Okay, let's get back to this man who drove off with Harvey. All right. Did you notice anything strange about him? Anything different? Peculiar? No, that's a trouble. Like I told that lieutenant, you never can tell about them kind of jokers. What kind? You know, them psychos. Like that guy is. Oh, you figure he's a psycho? Oh, sure, has to be. I got it all figured out. Yeah? How's that, thing? Look. Look, here's a guy sees an ad in the paper. Car for sale. So he figures he'll meet the guy who run the ad, drive out on some lonely stretch of road, bump him off, and make away with the car. Just don't make sense. Why not? <laughs> Any guy who's in the hot car business don't go through all that trouble. And letting people see him, besides. He picks out some nice-looking jalopy parked on the street, picks a lock, jumps the ignition, and whoop, he's off. Clean. Get what I mean? Yeah, I get what you mean. Sure, but this guy don't do it that way. He puts himself in a spot where I can see him. And even worse, when Harvey picks up that dame in front of that insurance building, he don't back out of the deal. He bumps Harvey off with one perfectly good witness sitting right there beside him. The guy has to be a psycho. Hmm? Seems to make sense. <laughs> sure. I got it all figured. Hey, look, when that lieutenant, uh, what's his name? Franchetti. Yeah, Franchetti. When he picks up them three guys I put the finger on, all he's got to do is find out which one's the psycho. That'll be the guy he's after. But look, I gotta get back on a job, Mac. Guy wants it by five this afternoon. Hey, I hope I helped you out, Mac. Let me know if you get that guy. Huh? Yeah, I'll let you know. <laughs> Expense account item six, a dollar and eighty-five cents. Cab fare back to police headquarters, where I had a talk with Alma Albright. Tell me, Ted's been arrested, Mister Dollar. That's right. Why'd they have to do that to him? He didn't have anything to do with it. I'm not too interested right now in what happens to you or Ted. No, I don't blame you. That man who killed Frank, do you have any idea what kind of work he did? Work? Yes. Did he say anything about what he did, who he was, or where he lived? No, no, nothing. All he and Frank talked about was a car. Was there anything peculiar about his hands or his clothes or anything like that? No, no, nothing. I Wait a minute, his clothes. Yeah, what about him? It was a kind of a pink, sweet odor, I noticed, like, like... Nail polish remover, maybe? Yes, that's it, nail polish remover. How did you know? Did that have anything to do with Frank's death? I'm not sure. Expense account item seven. A dollar and 85 cents. Cab fare back to the garage. Ziegler had finished the paint job and had punched out for the day. Expense account item eight. Two dollars and ninety-five cents. Cab fare to a rooming house out on the west side of town. Hey. Hi, Mac. Come on in. Come in. Thanks. Well, what brings you out this way, Mac? Uh, something turn up about that joker who bumped your insurance friend? I wanted to talk to you about that theory of yours. Theory? Oh, oh. Oh, you mean about the guy being a psycho? Right? Yeah, yeah. I think you've got something there. Oh, yeah, sure, sure I have it. Figures. Say, uh, look, I was just getting some clothes together to take down to the cleaners. you mind if I go ahead with it while we talk? No, no, go right ahead. Thanks. Hey, uh, about that psycho routine, yeah. That's the only thing that makes sense about the whole business. You know, him knocking off your girl, your friend with the girl in the car and all. I thought of another angle about the girl, Ziegler. He might have had some plans about her, too. Hey. hey, that's right. Never thought of that. It ties in, though. Yeah, no telling what a psycho will do where a pretty girl's concerned, huh? Ah. How do you like this jacket, Mac? Some class, huh? Sent me back a C note. You kind of go for classy clothes, don't you, Ziegler? Oh, yeah, yeah. I like them fine. Big cars, too. Huh? Oh, ho, you ain't just whooping, Mac. Nothing gives a guy class like sharp clothes and a real fine car. What did you think of Frank Harvey's job? That's... Mac, that was the end. A real dreamboat. Car like that, clothes like these. 
And I could really have the dame standing in line waiting for him. Huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. You always take that many clothes to the cleaners at one time? Hmm? Oh, yeah. you got to take good care of rags like this, you know. Should be cleaned after every time you wear them. Do they have any trouble removing the acetone odor from them? Acetone? Yeah. The solvent you use in your auto paint. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, that stuff really clings. That's what Mrs. Albright said. Is that right? Who's she? The girl you and Frank Harvey picked up in front of the insurance building last night. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. She, uh, noticed it, huh? That's what she said. Oh, nice looking babe, that Mrs. Albright. Real nice. Just the kind to fit in with classy clothes and a dreamboat car like Harvey's, Oh, huh? man, you're saying it's a doll like that, a car like that, a, a guy would really be sitting on top of the world, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, how'd you know, Mike? That uh, acetone stuff tip you, huh? It helped. Mm -hmm. Your crack at the garage about picking up the girl was the real tip. Yeah, that's right. I shouldn't have known about that, should I? How do you like that? Always did shoot off my mouth too much. Well, you want to ride in with me or wait till the cops get out here? <laughs> Might as well ride in with you, Mac. Uh, I'll get my coat and hat, huh? Don't try it, Ziegler. Okay. okay, okay, Mac. I quit. I always get excited at the wrong time. Like I did with Harvey. Oh, that was too bad. Killing him? No. No. Doing it in the car that way. Spoiled that great upholstery. Couldn't even use the job after that. That was a mistake. Expense account item nine. $17.50. Food and hotel bill. Expense account item ten. $68.40. Plane fare and incidentals back to Hartford. Expense account total, $191.15. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar.